ministers, the Minister of uh, uh, Tourism and Culture, designate, and the outgoing Minister of Tourism and Culture, the Honorable uh, Ahmad Nkeba, and uh, Honorable Abidjo, uh, Permanent Secretary, Madam Kodo Jabang, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Directors, Drama, Drama sorry, uh, Directors here present, uh, senior officials on the high table, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press corps, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, press conference organized by the outgoing Minister of Tourism and Culture, who is the Minister designate for the Ministry of Regional Administration or Regional Government and uh, Religious Affairs, the Honorable Ahmad Mugayin Kumba. Ah, I am Ibrahim Sankare, the government spokesperson, and I'm pleased to be the chairperson for this program today. Uh, may I please begin by appealing to all people here present to turn down their phone ringers, the mobile phone ringers. If you can kindly put them on, you know, flight mode, or you can just on, on silence, such that uh, phone, phone calls will not be interrupting the recording and the video proceedings of this very important press conference. Uh, the Honorable Amarba, as you all know, has been given a new ministry. That's why I call him the Minister Designate. Um, he wants to outline his achievements uh, during the period he presided over the Ministry of Tourism and Culture. Among other things, he will give a general statement. He'll also talk about issues arising out of uh, the parliamentary um, project or investigation based on the petition by the then tourism board so minister Ba will be reacting some to some allegations and uh, based on that report also um, he would be talking about uh, the expansion of the Gambia tourism market the world bank project and um, other programs and uh, activities that uh, he actually presided over as tourism minister and the way forward he would conclude with a statement a generic statement uh, outlining government programs and policies and what the gambia government plans to do you know as we move forward with respect to uh, the changing paradigm of the gambian media milieu uh, what we see on social media, uh, what we see on the, on, 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 on the newspapers every day. So he has uh, a statement regarding what government plans to do uh, regarding that kind of situation. Um, other than that, I think uh, we will be, after his statement, we will be inviting members of the press corps to come out with questions. Sometimes they may not be questions, but comments or interventions. I would advise that we exercise decorum uh, so that we can do this thing smoothly and exit this hall so everybody can go and do your news reporting. And then the, the program would, would go in this order. You would rise up, raise your hand. If you are recognized, you identify your name and you identify the media house you represent, then you, you can fire your question, except if there is a follow-up question, you give chances to another person so that everybody will be treated fairly. I wish you the best, and I wish us all a very happy and productive press conference. May I now have the honor to invite the Honorable Ahmad Ba to come and address this press conference. Thank you. Too many mobiles. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Thanks for what we're expecting an announcement from State House. The ministry would be addressed as the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, because that's what it represents. A request to that effect have already been written to the office of the president to make that pronouncement, and we're expecting it anytime soon, inshallah. Honorable Minister, designate 
of tourism, arts, and culture, the government spokesman and the permanent secretary, deputy permanent secretary, director generals of the three institutions, GT board, GTHI, and the NCAC. The senior officials of those institutions here present, including those from the ministry, the members of the press. Welcome to the GTHI. This was the place where we had last had our press conference about two years ago. And that very press conference, three years now, that very press conference was chaired by Sankare with the former Minister of Information, Mr. Ibrahim Silla. And I'm sure some of you will remember that press conference. Today, we intend to repeat another press conference where we want to discuss with you matters of great importance, and that is matters relating to the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, the Gambia, and some of the issues that are being talked about in this country. As a government, let me just start with, we'll be appearing more often with these press conferences. From cabinet ministers, that will be led by the information minister, uh, the government spokesman, the information minister, and cabinet ministers to meet the press and exchange views and ideas with you. We certainly would change the style of engagement. We'll be aggressive in making sure that we answer questions where they're asked, where we and we clarify where it is necessary, but also will act in accordance with the law to protect the integrity of government and government officials where you have a press that is intended not to say the truth, not to disseminate correct information, but determined to malign and have an ambition, hidden ambition, to destroy and talk evil about officials of government. The law is clear. We are not threatening anybody. We are partners together, but we want responsible journalism that would educate, inform, so that we can work together in the development of this country. We will not allow anybody to use the comfort of your laptop, the comfort of your mobile phone, to be maligning people and, dis and disseminating, spreading false information against individuals. We are ready to check the challenge to the courts where necessary to make sure that we work as partners, but justifiably and honestly and sincerely. Yes, as uh, the government spokesman have said, it is important that I give you a small brief. I cannot give you all because I will spend the whole day here if I need to tell you all what we have achieved since we took over. But we are proud that the government of Adam Abba have made remarkable progress in the development of tourism, arts and culture the last seven years. Of course, every other sector has moved on. But we must say that this sector has witnessed significant progress, massive progress, since we took over. When we took over in 2017, the arrivals numbers were at 100,000, 139, 150,000 uh, arrivals a year. Post prior to COVID in 2019, this government have raised the number to 235,000 arrivals. When COVID came, we went down to 90,000 and then crawl again we are one of the fastest growing countries, recovery, fast, fastest recovering, recovering countries in the tourism arrival, one of the best in the sub-region. And today I can proudly tell you, we are almost at pre-COVID numbers by the end of December. We will be back to pre-COVID numbers by the end of December. We have done this because we were determined to make sure that we do more marketing, and make sure that Gambians represent themselves in promoting this country. When we took over, we found what they call PR farms that were based in Europe, not in the Gambia. 
who we are to promote the Gambia. Who would just write a statement when they want to, and they were paid thousands of pounds. This government felt it was wrong. We hired Gambians. We posted them. We sent them to go and promote this country. And they have done extremely well in that task. And that's why nobody can promote the Gambia better than Gambians themselves. They know the country and they know what to talk about. They have our culture, they know everything. And we are proud to say that the destination managers are doing and have done a fantastic job. So the decision of the government of the Gambia at the time to terminate the contracts of these PR firms was not only driven by financial reasons, but it was also driven by reasons that we best, that Gambians were best to promote their country than non-Gambians who only have to talk when it is necessary for them. And that has given us the opportunity to really promote the destination. We worked on uh, product development, a lot of new hotels are about to be completed. We have the list here. I think they are about how much? Nine? 12. 12 new hotels about to be completed. The beds have increased considerably since 2017. Uh, we are now working on trying to improve on our product development. The Gambia Tourism Board, when we came over as a government, we found that the Tourism Board was taking overdraft. A certain time they take overdraft because it was difficult for them. This government came with the initiative of making sure that investors also saw commitment and participation in the process of developing our industry. Government came out with a policy that a 5% non-refundable deposit to develop tourism infrastructure was important. And this was adopted and implemented. And that has led us today to the completion of numerous projects that I'm going to list for you that have been initiated by the Gambia Tourism Board and that has been completed, ready for inauguration. And I'm sure the minister, through the heads of state, will be presiding over the inauguration of these projects in the next few weeks or few months to come for Gambians to see. We also managed to make sure that we built uh, a very fitting head office for the Gambia Tourism Board, and not only that, to expand in the international market for us to get what we lost years ago. Two weeks ago, we concluded a contract, a deal with the Apollo Group. We are now getting back under the directives of the His Excellency, the President, we are getting back the Scandinavian tourists back to the Gambia. From October, the Apollo Group will fly from uh, uh, Denmark, from Denmark, Sweden, Finland to the Gambia. And uh, that we have lost since uh, 2019 when we lost uh, to, uh, the Nordic, to the Nordic that was coming to this country. And we have also last two weeks ago, concluded a deal uh, with another airline that will fly from Rome, from Italy, to through Dakar to Banjul. So Gambians would have the opportunity also to come with that flight to this country. And when we went to France last year, upon coming back to France, we have also got uh, one of the third biggest operators to be selling the Gambia in France and in Italy. They will be using regular flights to come to the Gambia. And that will start in July. So the Roma flight also is starting in July, roundabout, to the Gambia, direct flight. And we are discussing with other two operators to make sure that they come and, of course, bring tourists to this country. As you're aware, when we came also, we introduced what we call joint marketing. What we realized was two operators were doing all the marketing themselves, and they had all the decisions. This government felt it was important that we put money in marketing the Gambia with the two operators so that we can have more arrivals. And that has succeeded immensely. The Gambia Tourism Board, through the Ministry of Tourism, the Ministry of Tourism, through the Gambia Tourism Board, is now participating in joint marketing with two operators 
that are coming to this country. And the Gambia Civil Aviation have been very responsive to that. They are also giving incentives to tow operators that fly in their aircrafts. And indeed, of course, Gambia International Airlines has also been doing a wonderful job in cooperating with us in giving discounts to allow air airlines to land in this country. And this is making a great difference to us. So we believe that uh, where we are now, uh, we are moving forward. And we've seen a lot of arrivals and indeed a lot of training within staff development, human capacity development. And uh, we have witnessed a lot of changes in this institution. Therefore, I'll come back to that later when I'm coming to read you the projects and some of the other things that are waiting. With regards to the Gambia uh, Tourism, uh, uh, Tourism Hospitality Institute, that this institute where we are here, it has been transformed considerably. And the capacity have increased. A new management in place, led by Mr. Singate and Mr. Konate. Conte, we have seen since the we took over in the last seven years, a significant increase in, in terms of numbers that they've been generating, in terms of the quality, in terms of expansion in various areas and in training, indeed. When we come to read, we'll also give you some of those uh, projects. And the institution, hopefully soon, will have another venture that government is trying to work out as soon as it is sorted out. I think the, uh, the director general will be, will be, it would be nice that you inform the press of that great achievement once the document is signed uh, with the Ministry of Interior. We do not want to comment on it until when uh, it is completed. And they also went into bakery, trying to train Gambians. Uh, a lot of other issues with the World Bank project, a lot of things will be done in this institution to capacitize it, to make sure that this institute will deliver to the expectations of Gambians. Uh, the National Center for Arts and Culture. Indeed, uh, the National Center for Arts and Culture was the greatest achiever and that had achieved more than any other institution in the new dispensation. They achieved more because it was an institution that was dumped, left out. When we came, the first thing we did was to make sure that to allow them to employ more professionals, revamp the institution, train more people, get more qualified people into the GTH, uh, into the National Center for Arts and Culture. And it paid dividends, absolutely it paid dividends. And government wasted no time also in revisiting their wages and the budgetary allocation of the NCAC that gave them the capacity to be able to deliver on what they are delivering now. We also believe as a policy, culture center tourism, it was important to develop our heritage sites. Today we have developed Almost most of them, we still have few that are left. And I'm sure Mongo Park, Mr. Sise is left out. Although the Minister of Finance, Honorable Minister, have asked that we submit the request and he will give the money left for the completion of Mongo Park. The Kerbat is completed, not inaugurated yet. Wasu is completed. Um, uh, um, uh, Mongo Park is on. And we are now working with other heritage sites to make sure that they develop them and to get us the type of product that you want. Are you aware that we organized the bicentenary in January, celebrating 200 years? And that has now given us the opportunity to have a festival, national festival, every year in this country, so that Gambians can showcase their talents. Uh, and then we display our culture for the world to see beyond what they have seen. And uh, we have allo allo allocated them the land, and uh, we are now trying to see how we can repurpose the World Bank loan, 68 million, to accommodate some of the things that were very important to this institution, particularly in national theater. We've realized that most of our artists are subject to be borrowing, uh, sorry, renting very expensively places where they are not even allowed to sell drinks. So we want to put an end to that, to give them the opportunity to be in a modern national theater that they can display their talents and make money. And then, of course, you are all aware we've been represented internationally, showcasing Gambian culture and Gambian tradition all over. When we come to read that, we should be able to also, I mean, tell you how much of that we have done. Now, the other one is our 
efforts, what was invested by everybody in convincing the World Bank to invest in the Gambia, to support the Gambian tourism sector with a grant of $68 million, which we never witnessed. And that's, that project has started under the leadership of Mr. Sise, Modu Sise. Uh, he is not with us today because he's have some issues, but I'm sure you'll be seeing them. And as often as possible, the minister will be updating you on some of the activities of this project. Now I will give some of the sectors to come and read some of the achievements they themselves that they have prepared so that you can listen from them and then we can proceed on the other issues that I want to come and deal with. If you so allow, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we can allow them just to give a synopsis of what they have presented they themselves. We will not be reading the entire text, whatever, just the few ones that you need to project. Now, I want to introduce you somebody that we believe will do more than what we did and will move on from where we are. And that is Mr. Abdul Job, the now Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture. Mr. Job, as you know, he's well exposed. He's traveled all over the world. And um, so with a very solid team we are leaving behind, Mr. Job will move on from the foundation to higher heights and get more achievement for our tourism sector. Mr. Job, we congratulate you and welcome you to this, to this industry. And uh, you must admit that Gambia was very high and remained high internationally. And uh, Gambian mark has been seen all over beyond our borders. So we will come to the next item of it, but I will now allow the director generals themselves to come up and give a little bit of synopsis of some of the things that they personally believe that we were able to uh, bring forward. Uh, on that note, Mr. Chairman, I will involve the uh, Director General of GT Board just to bring the few, the hotels, the numbers, and all the rest of it. You don't need to read the whole uh, uh, literature. It will take a long time. People are on Ramadan. I'm sure some people would like to leave early. So just the numbers and the rest of it, OK? So thank you. I'll come back. I'll come back to more of the issues. I have the energy to talk like how you are talking. Uh, good afternoon once again. And then uh, I want to also recognize the honorable ministers present, the uh, government spokesperson, um, the permanent secretary, the GPS, and my colleague DGs and also senior staff uh, from the Ministry of Tourism and Culture and the Satellite Institution, and also the, uh, the press without which we will not have had this uh, uh, press conference. Uh, Minister has actually done a lot for us uh, by highlighting some of the achievements. And I will always say that one of the greatest achievements that we have ever had is having a GT board head office. I've worked for tourism for the past 25 years, and we've been always been housed uh, either in the, at the uh, ministry or uh, rental properties. This time around, a GT board can boast of having their own office. I think this is a great achievement. Um, the other achievement would be the infrastructural de development, especially in terms of road connections within the tourism development area. I am sure uh, if you had been frequenting the 3DA, you realize that going to Tamala during those days was, was, a, was a nightmare, much more uh, going to uh, Mansi Beach area and also Lemon Creek. These roads now are now motorable and they are now standard uh, uh, roads. Uh, I think uh, this is also a great achievement. And also, we will, I want to take this opportunity to thank the ministry uh, for actually uh, helping us make sure that this thing happened, as well as uh, the other institutions like the National Roads Authority. They were very instrumental in helping us make sure that we have these roads. Um, when you look at the upcountry facilities, yes, it's true, there have been a lot of talk on the ecologists. But then again, uh, we are doing our best uh, to make sure that uh, we will have standard ecologies that would serve as a platform for other ecologies that are within the country to emulate, because uh, we are going to make sure that we set the standards for them. I know there are other ecologies of country, um, but we think we will need to set a platform whereby others will come and say, okay, this is the standard that uh, the government wants, so that any other person will also try to 
uh, make sure that they meet that standard. Uh, apart from that, also, I would like to mention the uh, the, the the fact that uh, we will, we are working on uh, security in the TDA because really, if you hear that uh, tourists are coming to the country because it's peaceful, and uh, we have decided to build a modern uh, tourism security office uh, for the tourism security unit. And I think that's an achievement in order so that the tourists will be assured of safety. Um, in terms of other uh, important facilities for our informal sector, we had uh, built a modern craft market for Senegambia, no, for the Palmarima craft market. Uh, if we are frequenting Palmarima area, you will realize that they were in, uh, on the road sites and they were, work, they were on uh, massive structures, but we have not built uh, permanent structures for them and uh, they, they can be proud of having those uh, those 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 thoughts. Um, we would be... How many tourist market? We, um, we, we have built... The new one that we have just built is, as, 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 is the Palmarima Craft Market, but we have also the Fort Lease Senegambia, uh, like Palmarima Craft, Kodu Craft Market, um, Fajara Craft Market, and also uh, the Senate Cabo yeah. under yeah. under the yeah. Land Hoop project. They are all the folks. Yes, they are all the folks. Yes. Uh, we had, as Minister rightly mentioned, um, we are working on building the products. And most of the time, when you meet with our partners that bring tourists to Gambia, they will tell us that we really need to work on high, uh, quality beds. Because of that, we have decided to allocate, give people, uh, allow some people to build some. Uh, more uh, hotel 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 rooms because this is what they are, they are looking for although we do have a lot of them but we think that uh, as the time evolves as tourism evolves things uh, the demand for tourists changes so we have to build uh, to meet the demand of the tourists so as a result we have allocated some projects and very soon as minister just highlighted we will, those uh, uh, close to 12 12, new 12 lodges. yes and include lodges, few new lodges in those hotels. In, in terms of marketing, Minister has already mentioned there have been a paradigm shift in the way we market nowadays. Before, we used to appoint a PR marketing firms. Um, now that we have decided that the best person to talk about Gambia is the Gambian himself. So we have been encouraging our own Gambians, including the diaspora, to help us market destination Gambia. Apart from that, also, we had appointed our own staff in, the, in our source markets. And we have given them targets that the only, so the, one of the most important thing that we would need from you is to help us have airlines, help us have tour operators and travel agents to Gambia. Apart from that, I think uh, we would not want to, to do anything. But uh, again, I think uh, with that, they were able to achieve a lot. As we speak now, we, the, our, our, our own staff, we are able to encourage uh, some tour operators to come to Gambia. Minister has just mentioned about the Apollo. Uh, the other one is about uh, uh, about uh, Portugal. We had uh, also uh, ensured that we have two officers coming from uh, Portugal because we have realized that a lot of Portuguese tourists now have interest in Gambia. And um, just recently, uh, we have concluded a farm trip with some two operators, and all of them expressed interest to bring tourists to Gambia. And perhaps be because of that, we'll be able to have tap Portugal uh, increase their flight frequency to Gambia as well as increase the uh, the months that they are going to uh, fly to Gambia. We have also tried uh, by all means to also increase the number of tourists coming from Poland. And as a result of our efforts, we are able to convince uh, Portuguese uh, Pol tourists from Portugal to come from the south. And before we used to have one flight from railboat tours, now we are having two flights. The other flight is coming from Warsaw, the other one is coming from the south which is also a great achievement. We have, for, on the same, uh, for Portugal alone also, uh, there were some tour operators that were operating from Dakar, from Senegal. Although, yes, we are, we are in Senegal, we are the same people, and again, we, are, uh, we, we support each other. But this, uh, after these farms that they have contacted to Gambia, they've decided to move their offices from Dakar to Gambia. That is uh, Pinto Lopez and also Salferios. They are now going to move their office from Dakar and they've already started working with our tour operators, with, with our ground operators. Regional marketing Nigeria. Yes, I'm coming back. 
Um, also, because of our efforts, uh, Corendon, which is a top that flies to Gambia, have increased from two flights to three flights this year. TUI was operating four flights from UK, two flights uh, from Holland, two flights from Belgium. They have now increased, they increased a one flight from Holland, make, making the three instead of two. Um, that protocol, uh, as I mentioned to you, we are flying three times. But again, as I said, with the efforts that we have made with other two operators coming to Gambia, moving the office from Dakar to Banjul, they may be increasing more flights. Um, we have also uh, had a lot of uh, efforts in Belgium. And as a result of those efforts, we are able to attract some other four uh, two operators to come to fly from Belgium. And in fact, some of those two operators have already started signing contracts with some hotels. Um, with regards to our unknown tradi traditional market, Nigeria, we realize that uh, even some of our uh, partners, this, our stakeholders, hoteliers, will tell you that uh, they will prefer Nigerian tourists uh, because Nigerians spend more than the other uh, tourists that we used to attract internationally. So because of that also, uh, we have started, we have increased the number of uh, awareness campaign we are doing in Nigeria. And uh, very soon we will be conducting an outreach mission to Nigeria to attract the Nigerian tourists. And also we have we have realized that Nigerian tourists would like to have some form of activities within the country. And uh, because of that, also we have tried to build some more shopping malls. We have tried to allow people to invest on more shopping malls because the Nigerian average Nigerian tourists like to shop. And also hotels that will uh, be able to accommodate honeymooning. Uh, uh, this specific there. We have given the Mohammed Jar uh, uh, to build a Q International shopping mall. They have already started attracting international brands. Hopefully, by the end of the year, this mall will be completed, and that would help attract Nigerian tourists. Because when they when they are traveling, they want to buy a lot of gold. They want to go to international brand shops, and we want the Gambia to have that. It's absent in our country. Right. We have very few international brands if there is any. We want to make sure that. We get international brand, the Bougie, the Zaharas, the uh, different name of it you call it. So I think the group have already attracted few. They've already they are about to sign contact with few. And we hope that by the end of the uh, this year they would have at least got 15 new brands in the Gambia. So and they will make sure that this mall will have section for gold, jewelry, everything for the matter. That will bring Nigerian tourists to this country. Thank you, Honorable Minister. And the other thing is also about the regional market. We are promoting destination Gambia in Senegal. You realize that Senegal may be more expensive than Gambia. And we have a lot of Senegalese tourists that are interested to come to Gambia. Although we are the same, uh, we are the same people, but at least they want to come and share uh, their experience with us. And as, as a result of that, you realize that most of the tourists come to Tamala area from Senegal. And we have also intensified our marketing strategies in uh, in Senegal, using their TVs and using also their uh, bloggers and also their, their their influencers. What was your number of arrival last year from Senegal? Seven thousand. Yes. Uh, about that. Well, we need to know the figure. Sure, sure. And we are trying to do more to make sure that we have duty board officials taking the statistics at the border entry because some of them come here and they are not captured uh, in terms of our numbers of arrival. And government have already approved. GRA have accepted to house sure. your officials once you are at the border. Money, yes, so that they will help them. Correct. And this is important to mention because all the figures that the minister mentioned earlier, we are all air arrivals. We have not included the cruise that come that by, by by cruise ship. We have included also the one that come through the borders by road. Um, uh, one of the most important in that I like, and which is domestic tourism. You realize that most of the time. Uh, we were marketing international tourism. Domestic tourism was something that is new, that was not marketed. Uh, but we realized from COVID, not everything about COVID was bad, to tell you the truth. Um, we realized from COVID that countries that were able to recover quickly uh, from COVID are the countries that were practicing domestic tourism. And that is why we are now not left behind. We are working on strategies. And was Portugal, Kenya. Kenya, right. And then we are now working very, very hard to make sure that we Gambians become tourists in our own countries. Uh, we are going to roll out packages that are going to be friendly to the average Gambian, in the sense that there will be special rates for Gambians to operate. If you are so an, an explorer or an adventurer, you realize that Gambia is very beautiful. 
We have over 182 cultural and historic sites in the country. We have a lot of nature, beautiful nature, which we have not explored. We are working with the World Bank uh, to also uh, assess all these sites, and then we make sure that we uh, uh, we promote and also develop some of those sites so that people like Gambia or other people can also uh, can also uh, uh, go as tourists in those places. Uh, you realize that the Gambia is not much explored, uh, explored, uh, explore. Um, but then this time around, we are working very hard with the MCC to make sure that all the necessary facilities, e.g., the jetties, are in place. Uh, River Gambia has a lot of potentials in terms of bird watching, in terms of uh, cruising, in terms eco of eco tourism. You 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 will realize that the going on the River Gambia from one end to the other, you you you, are, you come across a lot of animals, like for instance, dolphins, hippopotamus, and different species of birds. So we are working very hard to make sure that we develop all the products or the facilities that are necessary so that tourists or Gambians can also move on the River Gambia from one place to another in order to experience the beauty of this country. Um, I, I, I want to conclude uh, uh, to say that it, it must be pointed out that all the market strategies and activities resonate very well with the GT board post-COVID tourism recovery strategy, as well as the new tourism policy, without which um, we will be beaten about the bush. Most of the time, you hear that, when, especially with students at the university, will tell you that tourism in the Gambia started by accident. And the reason being was that is that um, when tourism started in this country, perhaps there were not too many plans. But nowadays, we have what is called the tourism policy, and all our actions that we are doing are guided by that. We are not just beating about the bush, but we are guided by uh, a, a policy, policy, policy documents of, of the government. Uh, Minister, I'm Thank not you. sure whether. The rest we will take your Thank you. Thank you. DG, uh, of the teacher, Mr. Sinab. He's the new DG. You are here now. Congratulations. Um, Honorable Ministers here present. Uh, the government spokesperson, Director Generals, Directors General my colleagues from GT board and NCAC, senior members of the satellite departments under the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, NCAC, GT board, GTHI, um, members of the press, our colleagues, friends, that we want to... Why are you making the adjustment with the podium? Speed is taking the podium. You want to say yeah, you want to make the adjustment. You should have left it alone as it is. Um, we want to recognize the very important role that the press is uh, contributing towards the development of this industry because it is through the press that we send our messages across. Sometimes in a negative way, though, but then to be more patriotic, we would envisage and ensure that the messages that would be sent across will be realistic and accurate. Um, having said that, um, like the Director General of GT Board has uh, highlighted earlier, we are in Ramadan, so we don't want to waste much of the time here. So I will just go straight to the points to highlight some of the achievements that we are able to record during the period on the review. Now, to start with, I just want to recall our memories to the first meeting that we had with the Honorable Minister um, when he was newly appointed as Tourism Minister and we were giving reports, situation reports of our satellite, our various departments. And uh, when we mentioned our subvention at the time, his first question is, how can you develop as an institution with this type of support? And then we all looked at each other, including uh, my senior brother, De Ahasu. And uh, the first thing that he helped us to do was to augment our, our, our subvention. And I want to take this opportunity to quote Hasum to say at that point that a 300% increase on subvention is historic. 
on a sideline meeting with him, Hasum said to me, 300% increment on, on subvention is historic. So we realized that there was something that was going to happen in terms of the support and attention that we should have as an institution um, from central government. So we had a 300% increase on our subvention. And this was in efforts to be able to attain and obtain our staff retention plans. Because this was a time when uh, the attrition rate was very high. People were leaving the school because uh, uh, the take home was very minimal. It was barely enough to take care of the first basic things. So um, the minister advised us to look at our payroll and do some adjustments to be able to retain our staff. During, during COVID, we, I gave you 20% rates. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Minister. So as a result, we have... When I told you if it leaks, I can tell you it never leaks. Nobody talk about it. Will it will not. <laughs> Nobody will talk about it. <laughs> Really, um, so uh, we had uh, a staff very high staff retention rate now that uh, the attrition has been reduced thanks to um, that positive uh, decision. Um, following this, uh, following um, the increase of the of the um, subvention, we looked into the curriculum that we were delivering at the time and realized that it needed to be upgraded. So we, through the support from the ministry, we had support from World Bank also in 2017 to review our curriculum because we had the capacity in terms of human resources to deliver curriculum that would be matched in the international level, international, with international standards. So we did a curriculum review exercise in 2017 and this curriculum review was so appealing to the sub-region that we were able to send, sell our courses outside the country. This was the time we started to attract students from Senegal, from Sierra Leone, from Nigeria, from, from even Tell Guinea. Tell them how it came about. From we, offered, we offered scholarships. From Guinea-Bissau, yes. We initially offered scholarships to Guinea-Bissau. Uh, I, I wanted to take a shortcut, but um, the Honorable Minister wants me to give um, a full um, picture of the story. We gave them scholarship to, to, for them to understand the importance of this institution. And that led them to bringing their citizens to come and study in this institution. Very well. Um, as a strategic approach to be able to penetrate these markets, we offered scholarships to those nationals through their embassies in the country. And uh, we had the first cohort that was responded to by um, Guinea-Bissau, and then followed by um, Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And since then, um, you know, from um, word of mouth recommendation, we have been having a lot of inquiries from those countries, but also receiving students from from them. Um, the 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 ambassador of Guinea-Bissau to the Gambia was here yesterday to try to see how best they can send because of the impact that our training is having on their service sector in, in Guinea-Bissau. So one of the reasons for his visit yesterday was to see how best he, they can uh, be sending more students to the school to be trained in hospitality-related disciplines. And uh, the feedback we received from him was so positive that he said he is highly, highly impressed that um, since his um, posting to the Gambia, he had never been here but it was not a regret to come here to see at first hand what is what obtains in house and that he will be able to talk to those i mean um, back home in guinea bissau about his experience here so we are expecting and ready to receive more students from guinea bissau um, through our collaboration and also the scholarships that we've been offering now since it became a government policy to decentralize um, tourism activities, we had um, arrangements with the International Trade Center through the YEP project to extend training programs to, the, um, to, to, to rural Gambia. This was in recognition of the fact that a lot of investors 
that had wanted to invest in hospitality in rural Gambia would have thought of how to source their human capacity to be able to run their facilities. So from 2018 to 2022, we ran a couple of numbers of cohorts in terms of training in Janjambure, in uh, Farafenye, in Base, and also in West Coast. Um, the current situation of um, investment in hotels and accommodation facilities of country is as an offshoot of um, um, these trading programs that we conducted in these areas. Um, since the completion of these trainings, we have seen the augmentation of service level in those areas in the countryside, but also the confidence of investors to open hotels in those areas. Um, remarkable among them is um, the facilities that we witnessed being opened in Bate by Jigo Construction. It's a top-notch first-class accommodation. We have seen the one in um, Kuda. Uh, Kuda that is also owned by a Gambian. You know, and, and of course, the reno refurbishment and renovation of the existing facilities. Now, all these things are um, happening because of the um, policy, policy minister, the policy of the Ministry of Tourism to decentralize tourism activities. So we conducted um, training and we, we trained about 400 young people collectively in uh, both Basi, Janjambure um, and Farafeni. Um, this is um, a landmark and a laudable achievement uh, because by virtue of the interaction that I had with um, some of the facility managers, um, they have been highlighting um, how they have been able to attract more businesses based on the service standards that they have improved in those uh, facilities. Now, I mentioned about staff attrition uh, earlier because of... Um, you know, okay. a, review, a review of our pay, pay scale. Um, it did not stop there. Um, we had the opportunity to train about young people, about eight young people to, to, to develop themselves at the University of the Gambia at bachelor's degree level. But also we trained about six people at master's degree level in tourism and hospitality management. These are all efforts geared towards um, building capacity for the institute to be able to deliver um, to the maximum level at quantitatively and qualitatively. And it has also helped us in uh, the staff retention because um, people always want to work in establishments that are uh, considerate of their well-being and their welfare and of course their professional development. So we are very much um, in the forefront in terms of staff capacity development um, by, I mean, and we ensure that every year we, we, we train at least two staff at master's degree level. But um, for bachelor's degree, all or any staff that has an entry to the university to do a program is being supported in terms of tuition and of course, um, um, continuous um, study leave allowance, I mean, study allowance so this has encouraged a lot of staff to enroll in the university and the number is, is increasing. Having being aware that uh, once they graduate from their first degree, they have opportunities to also go for their master's degree. Um, as we speak, we have successfully um, registered all accredited, all our students, uh, all our staff with um, NACA training license. Um, I think we are, if not the only, but one of the few institutions in the country that have met all NACA requirements in terms of accreditation. Some of them don't know what's NACA. <laughs> <laughs> NACA is the National Accreditation and uh, Authority, uh, National, um, the authority that is responsible for accrediting and authorizing training institutions. And what? Quality Authority and Accreditation Authority. Hmm? So they are the government in um, the department that is responsible for accrediting and licensing training institutions, including um, higher education institutions, that is the University of the Gambia and other related universities. 
or private universities that are in country. So they are doing accreditation for both tertiary uh, and higher education institutions. And one of the requirements that other institutions are finding difficult to meet is to have 100% accreditation rate for your trainers. And this is what we have achieved um, recently. I think the last batch of accredited um, 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 staff was just delivered to our registrar so a few days ago. So, um, you remember um, when there was um, elections by the Guinea Conakry and there was bread shortage in the country? And this is because a good number of our bakers are. Non Gambians. Uh, non Gambians. I've decided to start training Gambian youths to do baking. So, uh, <laughs> so we, we developed uh, a curriculum in bakery to be able to tra train young people. So we have um, a bakery a bakery training center. Don't leave it in industry. Don't leave it in foreign hands. Uh, because we feel that this is a gray area where a lot of young people will be interested in, so that um, we will be able to be more positioned to feed ourselves when it comes to bread consumption. Um, as part of the, our social corporate responsibility during the period on the review, we have offered 40 scholarship at um, certificate level and 30 scholarship at diploma level to people who had not been able to um, um, uh, fulfill their requirements or conditions in terms of tuition fees. Um, that these are needy students that have the required academic and skill potentials to develop but they are not able to 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 pay their fees so we waive their fees for them as part of our corporate social responsibilities in total 70 students um post uh, pre pre 2017 we have a 75 percent completion rate to our programs and our recent uh, statistics have shown 95% completion rate. And uh, the same statistics also showed a 90% employment opportunities and completion for our graduates, meaning 90% of those who have graduated from this school have got jobs. Can I help you on that, Mr. Director? Yes, please. We lost over 35 or to 5,000 jobs in this country after COVID, the cruise lines, the international job market, our own people have been employed in different parts of the world. They've gone. They are all trained in the tourism sector. They were working in hotels, bars, restaurants, casinos, and other parts. They've all gone. It's good for the country because there are Gambians working and they will be selling back for an exchange to our country. Now, because the Gambian government have a policy, of creating 150,000 jobs, the GTHI has been capacitized to train more Gambians because they are on high demand nationally and internationally. Yeah. And Mr. Singhane is leading that program, and government is giving him all the support to make sure that it happens. We want to train more Gambians so that they can be employed internationally to reach up 150,000 jobs that the government have played to create in the next five years. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Minister. The country is increasingly becoming a regional hub for hospitality personnel. Um, everybody is talking about the Gambia. Uh, when we had engagements with cruise ship recruitment companies, they tell us that um, your graduates are very clear, you know, in the front line when they go to the cruise ships. And uh, in the past, we were going to the Philippines, we were going to other countries to recruit staff. But when we started experiencing Gambian staff, it's not the same. So we want 5,000. And this was last year. I said, I did not stop it. Let them go, but we'll create more. People yeah. don't need to stop it. I said, no. <laughs> we will let them go because every Gambian has an opportunity, one and opportunity. Exactly. It's our responsibility to train more Gambians to go. Right now, they are demanding 1,500 yeah. on the spot. We don't have that, but that's why more Gambians are getting trained so that they can benefit from that job opportunity. So we said, how, how can we get this? We, this? we engaged the Honorable Minister at this time, and he said, tell us what you need to be able to do this. 
So we gave a shopping list. We said we when we, when we have this, we will be able to train at least 1,500 every year to be able to close the gap. But there have been a very loud outcry also in the industry. Our hotels are always calling. I want five cooks. I want uh, ten waiters. I want uh, three receptionists. I want housekeeping. Um, in as much as the institute is here, we will continue to provide those opportunities for young people because um, you know. Um, it's 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 um, it has a lot of advantages in terms of remittances. Maybe something back way. Our youth will not die at sea. Yeah. Now coming here for training. Yeah. So um, the the number of application we have now is overwhelming, especially when uh, the young people know that when you graduate from GTHI, you are hotcake for for cruise ships companies where you go and work and be provided with food, everything, accommodation, and they pay you more than one thousand dollars. You know so. It's also affecting the, the, the local job market, but it's, it's, it's a gap that we have to fill. And we can only fill this by training more and more young people. Um, I hope Mr. Minister is listening to that one. Yes, sure, I think. For the 150,000 job creation, yeah. you need to get more capacity to train more people, professionally though. Very well. My ears are wide open. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, on a final note, um, we have tried to link uh, agriculture with um, tourism. So um, we had uh, we benefited from a project, GIZ project, to have an agri-food processing um, center here. That is the construction that is happening at the back. We are going to process agricultural products here. Yes. Into so. proper packaging, proper fixing that can be marketed. That's what they are doing. Yeah. So so those items will also be used as you know, food ingredients in our hotels so that we will also encourage um, local gastronomy. Uh, uh, we want to encourage Gambian food to be to be displayed in our hotels uh, so that people that visit this country will have the opportunity to eat the, the, the tours, the supercarriers and, and all the rest of them. So um, the agro-food processing is, uh, we have already developed the curriculum, we have trained we have built a capacity. We have sent some people in Senegal to do a training on this. And once this building is ready with all the equipment, uh, we will also start to do the training on that. Uh, and on, on a final note, one more final note, we, we have just concluded the consultancy of the redesigning of our training kitchen, Honorable. Um, the, the training kitchen, our kitchen is going to be expanded. And now there will be two parallel kitchens, one dedicated purposely for training and the other one um, for, for, for service and for operations. So these are some of the achievements that we have been able to record. Not all of them, though, because of the time constraints. But then <laughs> these are some of the things that we want to update you. On that note, I want to thank you for your help. And you want to expect the expected from from them. And Madam Sebo, tell us the policy. Where we are with your policy? When we look at our policy crossed, when we look at our policy, our goal. Roll out that. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, honorable Excuse minister. me, Madam Sebo, when we look at our policy, your policy at your ministry. We want to advance the of the policy. And it's a matter of just meeting and agreeing on the first step um, sort of activities that we both expect. In the next month or two, we should be completing that. And for the reason, we will start with that. Thank you. She said what? Yes. Um, the preamble there. Go straight to the point. Yes. 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 Um, to my. The Honorable Minister, yeah. my good brother, Honorable Government Spokesman, the Director General, Permanent Secretary, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Press, Senior Staff, NCAC, GT Board, GTHI. And Honorable Minister, thank you for your kind words um, about the NCAC. I just want to add that we work with the uh, with the Gambia Tourism Board to also um, have this community in our talk guide scheme. You know, we have um, you know, done it in Makati um, and in Yufuri. Yeah, and we have also extended it to um, to Wasu. And last week, we were in Bandu. I mean, and there we are trying to train 30 youths um, to integrate 
the heritage of Banjul. I mean, we did, with the support of UNESCO, we completed an inventory of the built heritage in Banjul. You know, the like the monuments, you know, the old houses, the printing houses, and so on. So now we want um, to engage the local youth in the city to interpreting that heritage. You know, during the corona also, I mean, through the ministry, the NCC disbursed three million dollars to the artists because they were, I mean, um, everybody else negatively affected. Uh, we have also ratified the UNESCO Conventions 1970 Convention on the um, Trafficking of Cultural Goods and the 2001 Convention on uh, Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. This came into effect. Uh, six weeks ago, on 10 February 2024. Now, our task is to ratify the 1954 UNESCO Convention on the Protection of Heritage during times of conflict. And already, um, work has started on that. It's on the table of ministers for tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. And um, we have completed digitizing the oral archives in Fajara with the support of the University of Hamburg. It will be online by the end of this year. All the uh, tips and files. And we have also worked with the Gambia Tourism Board to revive the, the Kankara Festival in Matam in 2018. It was dead for, for, for three decades, but we worked with the Tourism Board and the, and the community in Makati to revive the festival. Now um, it is going to its sixth sixth edition um yes, i think i think those are things that i can ask the copyrights yes. what you did say it loud oh, well um the but, they are they are product yes. what they have done yes um the regulations were you know, promulgated in 2018 so that we the can policy be brought in uh, we can you know, register the artists um their works and also uh, assisting the artists um, for their visas. Uh, because now and then they want to travel. Okay, so they come, we give attestation, and now and then the embassies are very supportive. A few of them have even been given I mean, diplomatic passport, you know, to uh, you know to make their their international appearances um, I mean easier. And for the new minister, um, something that you are going to help us with is the um funding for the national endowment fund for arts and culture um, uh, the outgoing minister has you know promulgated you know the regulation so now it's just to take it to cabinet for funds to be put into that um fund to support the funding of artistic events and activities thank you very much in now am i right no no you have to wait a little bit Okay. Well, I have to start, and thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for your very valuable interventions. You know, Ahmad Babi, before he entered politics, he was a career school teacher for many, many years. So all the time you see the teacher nest in Ahmad Babi surfacing, you know, before the microphones. Uh, all the same, it was very good interventions, at least uh, that, that shows also he has a vast reservoir of the, of the ministry he's just about to leave. Um, you know, as a student of literature, I'm reminded of the words of the Scottish poet Valentine, who wrote in the 18th century about party. Every all too often human beings come together until they're so close and they leave. And this is what he said. He said, to part is the lot of all mankind. The world is a scene of constant leave taking, and the hands that grasp in cordial grip are doomed and long to unite for the last time when the Cuban lips pronounce the word farewell. So, as the minister is bidding farewell to his old ministry, and we have a new person coming in, it could be pretty emotional. The testimonies of these directors here demonstrate that the past seven years we are not years that we have spent idling about as it may be alleged elsewhere the achievements you know 
as um she said talked about about a center that has all too often been neglected the center for arts and culture no country no civilization nowhere can progress absent culture culture is a crucial element in any country's development and i think i should thank the honorable minister maybe because of the teacher career he had he had this sense of history and he decided that he must he must confront up front the, the cultural aspect and today thank to him and his staff we are talking about a very booming culture department okay go ahead allow me okay go ahead mr no, 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 that's okay allow me to deal with we will be having this now every two weeks. Thank the officials who have just helped me inform or read some of the issues uh, that I wanted them to help me to understand. We can't finish it even from here to tomorrow. Each of them wrote about three, four pages, five pages. But I told them that we cannot, we do, we cannot do that. But maybe subsequently, it can be done. Now, I am talking to you on an issue that has been an issue unnecessarily for a while. That is, when COVID came, all the hotels were closed. All tourism facilities were closed. They went on to ground zero. I want you to listen to me carefully and put your microphones ready to listen to what I'm saying. I then thought as a minister responsible of tourism, arts and culture, that the Gambia Tourism Board that was collecting the taxes of these people needed to demonstrate some responsible feeling of empathy and sympathy to those that have lost everything that they have. I directed through the board chair that let them be on part time to also show solidarity to others who are on ground zero. Well, the implementation was lagging, nagging. And I am responsible of taking decisions that I deem to be fit and necessary. When I realized that there was a strong resistance to my directives, I asked the board to go and have a meeting. In that board meeting, it did not come in the agenda, even though I have written through the board to ask them to implement this, consider implementing this. It was government business that the GT board needs to take some decisions, prudent decision to try to save resources because we didn't know when COVID was going to end. It was initially for a period of two weeks, three weeks, one month at most, and we consider as to whether do we need to continue or close the board, dissolve it for everybody to go home, redundant everyone. I didn't want to take the decision. I felt no. We cannot redundant them because everybody redundant, but let's make sure we give them a chance, let them earn half, and we proceed and see how things will go. Some of them were bent on never to see that. And we realized that the board also was not acting the manner and the speed we wanted this thing to be. I appointed the board through the, through the president of the republic. I straight away dissolve the board with the approval of the president of the republic of the country i dissolved it and then there were some staff who felt that they are super god super super nobody should put them they can do whatever they want to do and that nobody can do it i was determined to make sure we get to get it done And it was done. Then they wrote a petition alleging a lot of things, corruption, lodges not 
contract not awarded, not supported by GPPPA. Money being taken and all allocation. They made a lot of allocation. Went to the National Assembly. Said, we are prepared. Let them call us. We are born here, bred here. We fear no one. What we do, we know we do it right. We may not be perfect, but we can stand anywhere and defend our decision. And if any one of them have evidence, let them go and put it to the committee. This committee sat, met almost everybody. When they met almost everybody, I think I was the last to meet the committee. When I went to meet the committee, the first thing I did was to tell the chairman to lead petitioners. That is Sheikh Omar Ba, my own brother, Lamin Boja. have issues that he, the chairman, needed to know. And I told the chairman, you are in the same party with Lamin Boja. You are in the same party with Lamin Boja. Therefore, you cannot be chair of this, of this committee. You will be biased. You will not do justice in treating it. I want to prove that further to you when I said you are the same party with Lavin Boja. I'm not making allegation. I'm too good to do that. Let me give you this. Lavin Boja in his Facebook, in his Facebook, wrote this. He said, listen to me, that's Lamin Boja. The president castigating Gambians in the diaspora is another of his series of betrayals of the people who helped him remove dictatorship in this country. He is the biggest betrayer ever born in the Gambia. That's a government employee addressing a head of state in that man. And he further said, listen to me. I am. I believe I am confident. Alpha Ababakar Salah will win the elections in December. With a lot of other things, because there were there was another chap who resigned. Adam chap who resigned, left went to customs. Who in that same uh, note of Adam boy Adam he said, Adam chap, are you surprised? Are you surprised? Someone under the tutelage of clowns like Ahmad Ba can do unthinkable. Here with me. And let me give you further. Let me give you further to prove that he was campaigning even for Alifa Salah from himself. From he himself. Listen to Lamin Boja. Big time. I was with Papa Adam. On the campaign trail during the weekend and active on the social media during the week because I have to be at work during the week. Uh, week uh, I have to be at work. He wrote this. I told the chairman, you cannot be a chair of this petition. And if you do so, when you write a report, tell the Gambian people that you have political interest that you want to pursue in doing this job. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me carefully. He never did. He never did in his report. Secondly, I said the lead petitioner, Sir Omar Ba, is a confessed fraudster who has stolen money, confessed to it. I have the document here. Listen to me. I read it for you. 
Let me read it for you. I say he cannot bring a petition against anyone because he is a thief and a criminal for that man. A thief and a criminal for that man. Let me see. Listen to me, please. Sir Omar Ba stole money with the GT board a couple of days ago and he signed this confession. I, Sir Omar Eba, do hereby agree for the GT board to use the amount owed to me as an overseas study allowances amounting to $589,050 and offset against payment that I fraudulently made amounting to $678,585 without following due process and obtaining approval required. One, it's a confessed first. This is a command. Doesn't end there. What he did, when I saw them resisting, I wonder why somebody should resist being on part time when your colleagues are gone. I ordered immediate audit of the Gambia Tourism Board. Can I tell you the reveal, revelation of the audit? The revelation of the audit. Listen to me. Sir Omar Bar was found to have defrauded one million, over a million dollars of the GT board. We forward the matter to the police for action. With all the evidence that they attacked him, all the bang with the rocks, all of them done, everything from Ajib Bank. He went to the police, they paid the money. I think it's 1,028,000. Let me get you the correct thing. Documents are here. One million. Uh, what is this? One million twenty? One million twenty-five. One million twenty-five thousand eight fifty. He defrauded the GT board, and this is the lead petitioner who is talking about corruption. Yes, yeah, including the, 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 the six hundred something thousand. He said, "You after the audit when they were resisting this." He went, when we ordered the police to prosecute him, he went and paid the money. That's the receipt of payment to GT Board. Hmm? That's the receipt that he paid to the Gambia Tourism Board. The receipt he paid. Went to the police. He went, they paid him 1,025,850 of the Gambia Tourism that he defrauded. Do you know how he defrauded this? This very settlement. Who was the the lead petitioner. You know what he did? He went and obtained two ID cards in two names of the same Sheikh Omar. I have a photocopy of the ID cards here with me. I'll show you. No, we have to get to the bottom of this. We cannot just be tarnishing the image of people of people who are criminals. They want to continue their criminality in an institution. We have the right to stop it. Who are we not to stop it? When we are on oath. And that's one of the ID cards. Oh, la la. One of the ID cards, Omar, ba Omar Eba. One of the ID cards say Omar Eba. That's it. Look at it. And the other ID card said Seth Omar, Seth Omar Ba. That city, Sir Omar Ba, that he, this guy, used two ID cards defrauding the Gambia Tourism Board, and we requested the police. 
to charge him for criminality. Police wrote to us a letter refusing that, that refusing to charge him. A copy of that letter from the police also is here. Gambia police. Force. Gambia police force letter here saying we cannot charge him because paying the money we thought that would end the case. How can a thief steal money and then he pays back and you tell him that that would end the case? That's the lead petition of this petition. I took the file to the Ministry of Justice and I told the Attorney General to use his powers to prosecute Sir Omar as a deterrent. The file disappeared till tomorrow. We can never trace that file. Neither the Justice Minister nor the Solicitor General can give me a copy, that copy of that file until tomorrow. And I told the chairman of the committee at the time, this thing needs to be entered in your report. He said, no, I'm not taking it. Go to court, go and take him to court if you feel it. The chairman investigating somebody who brought a petition to you. You will not put that on board? You will not mention somebody who share in the same party who have a political vendetta? You will not do that? Not stopping from there. Looking at the committee, recommendation of their committee. He said reinstate staff. Immediately, Sir Omar was confronted with the first fraudulent act. He resigned. He resigned. Are you reinstating somebody who resigned? And then after all that, he went to court. Sued the GT board. He lost the case. He paid us cost and is paying all his liabilities as we speak. Mr. Boya had issues with the board, genuine issues. They have a legal advisor, a lawyer, by manner of which he behaved, he was terminated. We cannot discuss that because it's before the court of law. We have to respect the rule of law. You are now saying those are the people who should be reinstated as a chairman of a committee. Secondly, you, who are you, minister, parliamentarian, to determine how a director general uses his staff to do his job? That people should not be posted of country. You know we talked about here developing inland tourism. We wanted expertise there to help those hotels. Ten people, they posted them without the knowledge of the ministry. Well, I am on Ramadan. I swear, we never knew how this people were posted. No, no, neither the permanent secretary nor myself. They posted them. And that, if the director general, his discretion, believe you will do a better job there. Who can stop him? Not the minister, not the permanent secretary, nobody. That's his job. That's what the law has given him. Who are you as a parliamentarian committee to talk about that? Who are you? Is that what you are presenting to people? And it does not end there. Allow me time. Let's just read this. We finish it. People have been talking about it. They said the lodges. They said the lodges. There was corruption. The national audit immediately conducted an audit of all these lodges and their processes. Go and check. The audit report is there. He has it. Why are you talking about law? When the auditor general have audited the lodges and found no wrongdoing in the entire process, with an exception of payment procedure? Payment procedure. Why should you pay? This one should pay. Bala, bala, bala. Nothing was found in that. As a committee, when the auditor general make an audit, give a report, who are you to not to put that on board if you are investigating? And again, the same man, committee, they said there was no GPP approval in the allegation. GPP said they approved it. 100%. You said that the land given to Mrs. Jabang was too much. Are you the expert to determine that? 
Is that your job? Is that the job of a minister or anybody else? The technician determine what your investment is, what comes to the land that you should have. And not only that, Mrs. Jabang, Mr. Senor, and others, when with documents, they refuse to put those documents in an addendum in their report. That then that it bugos. They said the minister interfered directly with the board without going. Did they name one single incident when the minister ever did? They lied. They cannot give you one single evidence. Not one single evidence of interference. Did they name it? No. They lied. What did allocation? What did allocation? The official process was duly completed. An amount allocated to the ministry to help it use it to function perfectly to do its job. If the ministry did fuel any crime in that, any crime in that, that has gone through the due process? Who are you to question that? Who are you to question that? Then you said removal of board chair. I appointed the board. You know what happened? Wallahi amun Ramadan. Wallahi amun Ramadan. Wallahi amun Ramadan. When I went, the president said, Koto, no. I will not appoint this man as board chair. Billahi wallahi tawai. Billahi wallahi tawai. Billahi wallahi. He said, I will not. I will not appoint him as board chair for this institution. Billahi wallahi tawai. It took me time to convince the president. Two days. He said, I'm doing it. You will come back and tell me, remove him. And exactly that's what happened. When I went there, he said, what did I tell you? So, who are you to tell me not to appoint, uh, not, not to remove a board chair that is not serving the institution and the job that he's meant for? It's my discretion to appoint, my discretion to sack. That's not in business with parliament. Nobody. It's not anybody's business. Conflict of interest. You said husband and wife. The day we went there, the president said, to avoid any talk, I'm moving Mr. Senghor right from the as that who found the board to be at zero balance, overdraft, left it over 100 million plus turnover. The pedigree, the, the job he did, he moved it. Not only did he move him, but he got promoted, delivering the best of service at Diaper today. Who are you talking about? What has already happened? Does that need to appear in your report? This happened three years ago. Why do you have to put in a report? That means you are sleeping. You don't even know what's happening. So that appear in a report that has that has been addressed two years ago, three years ago, without even your knowledge. So for me, really, Claire Guru. When the president saw me laying the foundation stone of Lel Group, next day he called me. He said, Minister, did you know this Lel Group? I said, President, I have no idea. Were you people involved? I said, Wallahi, please, President, nobody from the ministry was involved. He said, This will be your biggest mistake. You will live to regret for the rest of your life. I said, What? He said, They will not deliver. I said, Mr. President, I don't know them. But I can assure you, any other project henceforward, my permanent secretary will be involved or designate somebody to be involved. And that's what we did with all other projects. We were in trouble with this land group. We engaged him. We are working now to resolve everything. It's been difficult. I confessed this when I went to the committee that it was a regret that he got the contract. We didn't know. We are not part of it. But he blamed me for letting such things happen without my intervention or my permanent secretary or anybody from my ministry. I acknowledge that. I accepted it. No matter. That's why I said, I'm not perfect. I just trusted people to do a job. He said, no matter what trust you have, you have to put an eye on what's happening in the institution around you. And I told the chairman on this. And this was a fair comment. I wanted to get the, tell them what is in me. Now, these are, the, these are some of the issues. He said I gave a discount. When I came, I found this pool we are running on overdraft. They have nothing. I ordered this five, but cabinet approved it. First, it was 
The business community say we'll not give you 10% of our money before we start work. They close up. Everybody was leaving. Then we decided to bring it to 5%. Even this 5%, when somebody complained, I know it's genuine, the minister had a discretion to give a discount of percentage. This investor came here. When he said what he was wrong, he was said he was leaving. He cannot give Gambia government money when he's not even started work. We encouraged him to come back. He wrote, we gave him a discount to start work. Unfortunately, he never started. He even left. You are telling me, who am I not to have my discretion as a minister, as I am mandated under the Gambian constitution to direct and control matters under my ministry? You question that? As a lawmaker, you know what the law is? So, gentlemen of the press, sorry, ladies and gentlemen of the press, I think it is important that we trust in our National Assembly members. Seriously, we have a lot of trust in them. But when you are doing something and you have a politically impregnated intent on an idea, you should make it known. When I told him you cannot be chairman of this committee because you will not be honest to us. Because Mr. Poo, you are biased. You will be biased. Tell people that this man is in your party. He didn't even mention it in the report. And when I gave him all this Seth Omar issue, he said, go to court. We are not going to admit it. Somebody was searching for justice and fair play. Did they show you one single receipt of evidence for what they have given to people? No attachment, nothing. And in fact, you want to question who drafted this report? And some of the committee members, they were hiding this report from them. They did not partake in the report. As if you think you can fool Gambians. Look, this government is out to fight corruption and we'll fight it. We will make sure that we fight. We'll make sure we do the needful. We make sure we do the right thing. Nobody is super. You think that you can go to social media, get petition to assemble me that can cover you for your wrongdoings? You think that can cover you? You will not be exposed for the monies that you have stolen or what you have done to the people of this country? Ladies and gentlemen, I await your question. Yeah, just, just to remind you, um, thank you so much, Honorable Minister. Uh, it's question time now. Just to remind you, if you have a question, you raise your finger, your hand, and then you identify yourself and the medium you represent. 